stare into the lens or can I just look at you? No, I need to look into the hole. Uh, my name is Leif Angles. I'm a professional strong woman competitor, uh, multi-time California strongest woman, and winner of the first ever women's professional strong woman championship. Uh, I'm here at Untamed Strength and we are doing uh, strongman seminar uh, events. We cover log, stones, and yoke carries. Um, I hope you guys enjoy these. These are going to be some good information if you're either picking up the implements for the first time uh, or if you're just looking to advance your game a little bit in competition. There'll be some things that you can work on. Uh, if you are looking for advice outside of videos, you can contact me at unicornstrength.com. You can find me on Instagram at uh, Unicorn Strength Training um, and also under my name, um, I guess it's probably spelled in there somewhere. Um, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram as well. Um, I do online training, uh, customized programming and uh, remote coaching as well. So if you're interested in taking some of these a little bit further or just looking for some better uh, change in your strength training program, you know. Okay, before you even pick it up, you, your body needs to be a shelf under the yoke. Okay? So when we actually start getting set, we're going to start the checklist from the top up. Right? So I'm going to find my back yoke position, um, which is about, it's gonna, usually you're going to have like a wide crossbar like this, um, which actually makes it quite a bit more comfortable. The wider it is, the easier it is going to be for you to like find a stable position on your back. Um, but the position on your back is kind of in between like your traditional high bar and low bar back squat position. So it's going to feel a little bit lower than like, a uh, high, high bar squat, like an Olympic squat, but you obviously can't set it low on your back. It's gonna slip right off. Because it'll fall behind you. If it's too high, you're gonna feel like you're always on your toes, and the yoke's gonna basically make you try to buckle forward like that. And if it's too far back, the, all the weight's gonna be trying to yank you back, and it's gonna slow you down, right? So you kinda need to find a good balance in between where it's sitting over your, your skeleton uh, very comfortably. Um, and not kind of like pulling you forward or back. Yeah, so that, that position is it's similar to like if you've made the jump from doing like a high bar squat to a low bar squat, like trying to feel what it feels like. So if you have the relaxed upper back, you're just going to sit it right across the top of your shoulders. It's going to be too high. You're going to feel like it's caving you in or like riding your neck, right? Or it's going to try and pull you forward. So it's a little bit lower than you might initially want it to be, but that's okay because you're actually going to like set yourself in and create a shelf for you. So starting from the top, at least my mental checklist is always traps up together first, right? So just like I would if I'm coming into a rack of the bar, I'm gonna drive up into the bar. Um, where you grip is gonna unfortunately depend on your size and the size of the yoke. So if it's possible, hands out to the side. Um, if you're a little bit on the smaller side and like now they have some yokes that are pretty big and pretty wide, if you can't reach the size of the yoke, then your SOL, you're gonna have to just do it here. Um, but I would recommend putting the grips out and together. But I still have plenty of people that prefer to have their hands in. I think it's gonna depend on where your stability is, right? So if my grip is closer into my, into my shoulders, like a back squat, I'm gonna have a little bit easier time keeping my traps tight. It's gonna be easier for me to keep tension in my upper back, but I'm not gonna be as stable laterally, okay? Versus here, so if I'm a little bit stronger in my upper back and I have control to keep this upper back tension position, if I have my hands out wide on the sides of the yoke, then I can use this to help stabilize some of the lateral movement on the yoke. Another thing with the hands down here, you can actually um, keep it from swaying. So one of the bigger issues you're gonna have is with your speed. If it's not completely constant the whole time or if you take a step that's too short or too long, this thing is actually gonna start to swing on you. And having your hands here can basically stop that pendulum effect or at least minimize it. And that's normally where you're gonna see people kind of buckle and drop it because they take that, you know, one stutter step and then the next step is too big and the weight swings in front of them and then they just you know, crumple them. So stability first should be your plan of action on the yoke, even competing, right? And you'll see that a lot of people will get a really great start and they'll move and they get up to speed really quick and halfway through they're like, oh shit, right? So your stability is gonna be your best friend here. What about right? the breathing? Breathing? Yeah, we'll talk about okay. So, yeah, we can talk about how you're gonna do that. It's gonna depend on where you're going, but in general, the less the better, okay? Um, just like with any other like maximal lifts, all that stability is about creating a lot of really good tension in the torso, and if I have control of a full breath without yeah. exhaling, I'm gonna be optimal, okay. right? So, most yoke events are gonna be pretty quick. 
So in that case, you can just hold your breath the whole time. And if I've got a 20 second or less yolk, I'm not breathing. Okay. Um, when it's heavier, when it's longer duration, stuff like that, obviously you're gonna have to breathe, but that's when you're gonna mitigate when is the best time. Um, so we'll talk about that in a second once we get up to like speeds and stuff. So starting with pick and stuff like that, we're gonna start with the most stable, which is gonna be like the most elementary, but it's also gonna be the most useful when it's actually heavy, right? So treat it like it's gonna be heavy first. So you'll see this because, like I was talking about, that mental checklist starts with like creating tension on the top first. Like I won't, you'll see us, we won't set our feet underneath the yoke first, right? Because I'm starting to actually make this tension up here. So it traps up and tight together, create that shelf, pressing in and against the yoke. So I'm using the rotation of my shoulders to create a shelf up here. Once that is set, that's the first priority, then you're gonna walk into the set position. So keep this all totally tight, then walk your hips underneath. So I'm trying to get my hips as close to underneath my shoulders as possible. If I'm stacked, I can drive straight up nice and efficient. My feet are about squat position, okay? I would say the wider, the more stable, the narrower, the faster, but we'll talk about where you go beyond that. But for now, just think about squat width and then yeah. drive straight up. You kind of want the foot position where you're going to be walking because if you start with a wide stance and come in, the, the yoke's going to start swaying on you immediately. So the foot position should really be where your foot's going to be going, you know, once you actually get moving. Grab up, and then this is where we'll start moving. Okay. Um, now we'll talk about like, so the foot position is going to vary. Um, same thing he said, right? A wider stance is going to be more stable, but once you actually start moving, you're not going to walk like this, okay? So typically anything in the easy to medium range, I wouldn't set really wide for the pick because yes, then you have to do an extra step to get back in line. But if it's a super heavy maximal, like uh, my face is going to bleed and I hope I don't die kind of carry, you want stability first. So in that case, using a wide stance to pick it so you can make sure you come up smoothly and then set in line is a good is a good course of action okay otherwise if it's comfortable enough you know you're going to get it off the ground without buckling yeah go ahead and set like about about hip width or like your walking distance um another thing another variation is to start split um and this one's just kind of like a little bit of an edge type thing so when the yoke is lighter and more manageable and you know you're going to haul ass Right? or you know that in order to beat your competitors, you gotta move a tenth of a second faster, this extra step to get moving is gonna cost you something. So we're actually gonna start in a staggered stance. So I'll actually start, like I'll mark up the middle and I'll take a half step forward and a half step back and actually start in a staggered stance so I'm already, I'm capable of moving as soon as I come up. In this situation though, you're not typically coming straight up out of the hole in line and then walking, you're gonna pick it as you move. Okay, so this is like if you're just trying to figure out ways to get faster on your already stable yoke, that's kind of the next step in the progression. But if you're yoking today for the first time, I want you to start feet stable. Okay. Do you want to take a step? Or yeah. Whatever you want. Okay. So once you start moving, the yoke is also going to move. So that's why the stability first, right? When you're competing and you're moving fast, you're not going to stand there and wait and be like, all right, let me let it settle down first. But when you're learning, take that approach, okay? Feel it first, be stable first, be confident first, and then introduce movement. So as soon as I take that first step though, typically the yoke's gonna start to move out ahead of me. That's why we recommend that wide grip because I can actually get some control on the sides of the yoke. You can actually create a forward pressure on it as I'm moving to help it keep it from swinging back. It. I know um, some people also will put their hands on the inside and try to push the yoke out or some people grab it on the outside and pull it in. Um, they all kind of do similar things. It's, it's more like what you find stabilizes everything more for you. Um, so that's something like eventually you might want to mess around it's with. It's going to be all about finding what's the most stable, what keeps it from moving the, the most. Um, on that note, I have heard that a lot. Like people have asked, like, do I push in or do I pull out? Um, I haven't seen actually much benefit to the pushing out. And people that have used it have mostly been improved when they actually pull in. Um, and I think the reasoning there is that when I'm actually pulling, I'm actually engaging my lats, right? So I'm creating more tension in my muscles in, the, in my shoulder stabilization. When I'm pushing out, all I'm really doing is engaging my, my chest, which isn't particularly involved in this when our focus is on the back. Kind of the next step you gotta focus on is you're getting your breath ready to basically keep all of this stable. Um, one of the things I like to Try to tell people is like basically from your hips up it should be like a tree trunk like this whole part doesn't move all the movement that you get out of this should come from the hips and the legs 
So when I'm actually getting set up and I'm getting my traps filled up into the bar, I'll start to get ready. I'm about here. This is where I'll get my breath. If I try to start pressing up and then get my breath, I'm not going to be able to expand it as much as I'd like to. So again, when you're still kind of like have some room here, you get that. And then you don't breathe after that. If, like she said, if if the if you can move fast enough, and you know you're not going to pass out. Like if you let any breath out, that stabilization and your core is going to start to go. If your condition, if you can't hold your breath for 30 seconds, your conditioning you need some work. Anyways, everything in strongman is an anaerobic event. Okay, everything is 60 seconds or less, maybe 75 if you get a long event. Um, so it's already anaerobic. You don't need to breathe. You're going to make it. Um, so if you get to the point where you do need to breathe, then you want to mitigate as much as you can that, you know, the tension in your core. So off the line, breathe before you even get underneath the tension, like you said. And then I would usually say hold it as long as you can, um, but then try to avoid the like, yeah. right? The gas being exasperated breath, like I'm trying to hold my breath and I just can't anymore, right? So if you have to breathe, then try to make sure that you're focusing on keeping the core tension and the strategy we would use is short, powerful exhaling bursts, right? So don't give yourself a full breath. Don't, Very shallow. right? Mm -hmm. Keep it shallow. So if I'm here, right, short little bursts, like in and out, right? So you can help get a little bit of extra oxygen, help calm that like panic feeling that it feels like when you, when you hold your breath, but making sure that this like rigidity stays high. Um, and you're probably gonna be wearing a belt, so the belt gives you some tactile feedback there too, but you wanna keep as much pressure here as you can. And then in terms of like contest runs and stuff, so we talked about getting off the line, we talked about getting up to speed. Um, staggering your stance is really great if, you, if it's a lighter weight and you know you're gonna take off and move quickly. As you're moving, it's all about just moving your feet as quickly as you can, but maintaining this stability in your upper back and your arms. So you, if you watch some people that are like really, really good at yoke, like it looks like you could just cut them in half and this top upper section like doesn't even move and it's just feet prancing underneath. So if you can get this totally locked down, totally rigid, really stable, you just move your feet underneath you as quick as you can. This thing's gonna be all over the place. Um, really, like when you start the acceleration, you kind of want to start with slow steps and then gradually build that acceleration. Obviously, you don't want to take the whole run to do that. You want to do that fast, but you don't want to go from zero to 60 right away because that thing's just going to swing on you and then you're going to be dealing with it doing this the whole time. So if you take too big of a step, it's going to put too much pressure on the leg. You're going to have a chance of buckling. Um, you kind of don't want to take too short of steps because that's really choppy and the thing's going to try to topple you over. So there's kind of like a happy medium where the leg is still mostly locked out and the weight is still kind of bearing down on your skeleton rather than being on your muscles. Um, the other thing you want to think about is you don't want to clamp down like this. So flat-footed stepping is going to, it's like every time you take a step that yoke's just going to want to stop. So it's almost, you got to think of like trying to glide. Right, so keep the, like literally as low as you can keep that Take foot. Heel toe on your walk. Plant your the step. heel and then drive through the toe. And again, like just heel, toe, oh, yeah. right? But glide, don't pick the feet up like this. You really want to keep those things low and immediately locked back into position. Yeah, and if that's your difficulty, so a lot of people, that is what their yoke looks like. It looks like this. But it's not as simple as saying just don't do that, right? Because if you don't have the strength and control to do that, you can't just place your steps, right? But pay attention to that. So if you can't control your legs well enough to be deliberate when you're planting your feet, it means that's a weakness that you need to work on. Um, so yeah, that's been a, a big issue for me. A, a lot of my focus has been on trying to keep those feet down. Um, one of the things I was having an issue with was, um, or at least a, an adjustment I made was, so my feet were very straightforward. And in order for me to keep my heel from like catching, I was picking them up to do that. So I've actually kind of opened up my stance a little bit, slightly duck footed. And it'll actually give me a chance to kind of plant my foot outward and kind of give me the, the space to like get my foot into position without picking it up really high versus that. Thing about it, like you 
you need the squat, right? Okay. So if, I, if I drive up and out like this, then I'm straight forward. Okay. okay. So if you're gonna stick with the, the bar grip on the elbows, try to get a little bit more rotation on the elbows and try to keep them down. Okay. As you go. Okay, that'll help you with that. And then you're starting wide. Yeah. Um, which is fine when it's heavy, but try an inline start. Okay, since it's light enough for you. So you don't have to step up to get it. So start in line and then start if you don't have to reset. if you can because it's going to save you that extra step um, and then get a little bit more tense against the bar so like like the squatting I think is yeah. a really good analogy for that same thing like don't let it just rest on you so you're not just driving up and creating tension in your upper back like if your hands are here try to actually like grip that bar keep the elbows down tight and actually like wrap around it Breath, get your hips under it. There you go. Hold on. We can move it up. Like I'll do that. Remember, hips under it. Breath. So try to get upright. Yeah. Try to stand upright. Get your hips under it so that when you're actually under it, you know, this part's already. You just stand up and you're there. There you go. Much better, much better.